Hello, this is the Clay Golem. We're back in Foundry again, doing a little bit more work on Monk's active tile triggers. Uh, just want to show you another way that we can use that. We've used it for going in and out of shops and things like that, which is really good. But what about traps? That's kind of important, isn't it? Uh, so here we have Haley. She's going to be uh, just wandering down this corridor uh, and suddenly there's a pit trap. Uh, so this is going to automatically do her role for her. Um, you could see that uh, it made a little bit of noise to let us know that something had happened. Um, it has revealed the pit trap right there. And although it's not actually showing the result, the roll has passed. There we go. Uh, it's a bit weird. Yeah, it was a three. Don't know why it didn't, uh, didn't immediately show. She has made that saving throw, but it's paused the game for her. So over here in my DM screen, I'm just going to reset this um, and reset the trap as well. Uh, and I'm going to make a, a quick little change to this trap because I have the DC very low. I'll take you through how I did this um, in a bit. So I'm just going to update that DC and make that much harder uh, for poor Haley. Uh, unpaused again. OK, let's try that again, Haley. We're going to move all the way across here and we are going to set off that trap again. It's going to make our acrobatics check for us, uh, which in this case was a 10, which is a fail. And in theory, Haley's just taken 10 points of damage. OK. Um, and we've got this bit of text up here that says, uh, as the floor collapses beneath your feet, you attempt to leap uh, for the opposite ledge. So she had an acrobatics check. Uh, she failed that. It's interesting it doesn't show the... Yeah, she rolled a 10. It's interesting, it doesn't update this window while I'm not in the uh, the GM one. Um, how strange. Uh, but you can see what happens. So a couple of different things happen as she moves along the corridor. First of all, uh, as she gets to the, the tile that is the pit trap, it shows us that it's a pit trap. It makes a uh, puts a card up saying that the floor collapses beneath you. Um, and makes an acrobatics roll. And if she fails it, it does damage. Now, what's interesting is um, it doesn't actually, didn't actually put up the card saying what the damage was. So let's reset this and move Haley back again. Oops, I've probably just done something silly because I need to uh, reset the trap again. And let's have a look and see what this tile here is doing. All right. So uh, double click this. We've got basic tile here. I've just used an image of this pit trap here. Uh, nice and easy to do. That. No animation, but we do want to look at triggers. Now on the setup, I've said this tile is active and it's for anyone that enters this tile. So just like when we're doing with the teleporting for the shops. Allow when paused, kind of irrelevant because the player characters can't move their tokens if the game is paused, so they're not going to set it off. Um, we don't need any of the other stuff on here. 100% of the time, this is going to go off. The actions bit is where everything happens. So, first of all, I selected show hide. Uh, and I said this tile, and I want to show. So this tile is normally hidden. Once they walk on it, it's going to show this tile. Regardless of any rolls, it's just going to show it. It's also going to pause the game. OK, so that should stop any other characters wandering into the same hole. It is then going to do an acrobatics check. So it's going to request a roll for the triggering token, Haley. It's an acrobatics roll with a DC of 15. Here is the text I can put in as the floor collapses beneath your feet, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it's a public roll. Bypass the dialogue so it just rolls it for us and it automatically rolls that. OK, so we don't have to wait for it to, you know, we don't need them to go into the character sheet in this instance to make that roll. This is going to automatically roll for them. And then what happens following this? So we're going to continue with the next instructions if to for the tokens that fail this. OK, so we can say just do it anyway, only if a token fails it or only continue if they succeed. OK, so... Um, we can continue anyway regardless but tokens that fail so once to do that then the next thing if we fail that roll we should do hurt heal so for the triggering token we're going to give them 
2d6 minus 2d6 health, okay, because we want to damage them. Uh, let's add that chat message because I think that's why it was not showing it before. And it's going to be a public role. Okay, so that's all this tile is doing. So let's reset this. Make sure it's reset. I'll show you what that thing and why I'm clicking up the top right here in a moment. Delete that. Unpause again. Go back to Haley. So again, because that's been reset, she can't see that pit trap and she can happily move along. Here. Now again, there we go. We rolled a 20 this time. So if we pop to the DM side, we can see that it has rolled a natural 20 there. She has passed that. The game has paused. But for the player, as the floor collapses beneath your feet, you attempt to leap to the opposite ledge. Uh, and she has successfully done that. So as the DM, I can pause the game. But it stops any other characters piling into the same hole. All right, so... Brilliant. Well done, Haley. You can move off uh, whatever you made your check. Good. Right. Uh, oh, I need to unpause it. Um, let's check again with that fail because I want to check that damage comes up. So uh, she makes she made that one even though it's a high DC. She probably won't make the next one. She's not. This is not her forte. <laughs> okay. Oh, did you see all that? Lovely jubbly. So it rolled all those dice. So she hit that. It gave us a bleepity bleep noise. It has shown us the tile. It has paused it. She did her acrobatics check, which she got a four four, and then it automatically did the damage dice two d six, applied them, and now Haley's incapacitated. She's down to zero hit points. So that's a really simple way of doing an automated trap. Let's rest. Whoops, don't want to do that. Let's rescue pure poor Haley. Get her out of there. Let's heal her up. There we go. She's back to normal and everything else. Uh, so there you go. That's that's how we set that one up. So just a reminder, it's about how you have these actions set up. So our trigger is just walking onto that square. Our actions are showing the tile, pausing the game. Completely my choice. You don't have to do that. Doing the acrobatics check automatically. If it fails, automatically applying damage and then deactivating this tile. And the reason why I've done deactivate the tile is because the next person probably isn't going to just blindly walk along the corridor. Now everybody can see this. So up here, at the top here, this grey bit here, I just created this. While I was playing with this, I it was driving me nuts resetting the trap. So I created a tile here that's just a switch for me. Uh, and this is very very simple setup it's any image will do because it was literally just to help me through it for this one i've got this is only the game master can do this and it's when i do a click so a single left click on this which i can do when it's paused that's when it will do its actions its actions are reactivate this trap tile and rehide it okay because when we're when this trap goes off, we're, de we're showing it and then deactivating it. So to reset it, I need to hide it and reactivate it. So that's all that button does. But what this means is you can use these triggers, you know, this I could use this one button here to reset all of the traps in the whole dungeon. And put them all back to where they want to be. That'd be nice. Um, but I could also use this as a clickable button for the GM to activate... Uh, any tile any animation tile um a turn on turn off a flamethrower it could be that there's a switch over here in the corridor and when the players click on it to activate that switch so we can have it as a tile when the player clicks on it activates that switch it can change the tile from an off switch to an on switch and it can also affect another tile such as closing a pit trap opening a pit trap turning off a flamethrower turning on a flamethrower anything like that we can do uh, using these very simple rules that were effectively we've used in just these two tiles of course you can get carried away and do massive amounts of animation with this stuff um, we could have a let's very quickly create a a one by one here that i'm going to have oh, again I, I don't really care what uh, image i'm using for this because i'm going to make it invisible um, and what we could say is actually this is going to be triggered by anyone entering this 
um, and the action is going to be anything I like. Um, you know, we could have it that, yeah, we get attacked by a crossbow bolt. OK, we could have it as that kind of trap. Uh, it could be that it automatically adds an item to their character sheet for whatever reason. There might be a reason. Um, it might hurt them. It might heal them. They walk into a particular fountain once per player kind of thing and it will automatically heal. Uh, pause, unpause the game, do something on a roll table. So it might be, you know, you step into the magic fountain and it will roll on a table to see what happens. Um, it can show chat dialogue. Uh, we can teleport them somewhere. We've seen teleporting. We can do that um, easy peasy. Um, just a whole bunch of different options that we could use for this, which is you know really really useful. It gives lots of versatility. Uh, so I just wanted to show you that's how we're going to be using this. Uh, I'm not going to be using this overusing this massively, uh, but it is really nice to know it's an option for us and we can have that anywhere and everywhere. And I'm sure as we go on and we build other things on top of this and we make this bigger um, and more expansive, we will find other opportunities to bring in things like this and triggers and we will grow our usage of it um, throughout of it. So I hope that's been helpful for you. Um, just gives you some other ideas, some other options, uh, depending how much you want to automate a lot of your stuff. Personally, I don't want to turn it into a computer game. Um, I want to keep a lot of that control. Hence, yes, I'm happy for them to trigger it and do the roll, but then pause the game and the rest of it I'm going to handle through normal dice rolls. Um, but yeah, it just stops them charging too far up the corridor um, and, and me going, oh, oh, hang, oh, hang on a minute, everybody go back again. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you very much. Take care.